Hi, my name is Eric Moen, and I'm a sound designer for video games, and this is my Unreal Engine and WISE implementation project breakdown. Uh, I have a demonstration video up if you want to check out what that looks like. It just goes through the whole scene in its intended way, so you can sort of see what it would be like to uh, play through the scene and get a general sense of the mood from the actual project itself. Um, but I wanted to go into a few things that I thought were really fun to work on and really interesting uh, that weren't necessarily showcased super well in the actual demonstration video. Um, so the first thing that I want to talk about is over in the WISE project. Um, I have some containers here for the weapons. So we'll look at the hand cannon for right now. Uh, we have a full shot blend container, which is called from, from the uh, hand cannon fire event, which is right here. So it just calls that one event and it within that blend container there's a few random containers that are here for the body the mech and the sub of the weapon and those are each separate layers of the weapon that all together make the full shot um, but i wanted that separation just to create more variations and more different types of shots that can happen so i can play each individual layer right now so these are the bodies These are the mech sounds. And then these are the subs. And they all have their own purposes. Uh, the body is just the main chunk of the sound that has all of the texture and all of the information in it of just what kind of weapon you have. The mech is just a lot of the mechanical bits of the weapon actually moving around to sort of ground the weapon within reality a bit. And the sub is to just add some low-end punch to the weapon so that it really feels powerful within your hands. And there's another aspect of the shot that I won't go into super uh, in detail, but it is the tail of the weapon, which also grounds it in reality, such as the, the mech layer. Um, but this gets dynamically swapped out depending on what area of the game the player is in. And so there's a few areas that I'll talk about later when I go into depth about the footsteps and the ambiences of the game. Um, but that is also there, and this is how some of the uh, outdoor tales sound like. And so altogether, those make the complete gunshot. And this is how it sounds within the game. So I really just had a bunch of fun making those different layers and trying to make these sci-fi weapons really, really interesting. Uh, I could have gone the route of having some traditional weapons, uh, but I, I really just enjoy making those weird textures and cool noises. Uh, so I just wanted to kind of give into that guilty pleasure almost and uh, create those sci-fi weapons for this scene. So next up that I wanted to talk about is our enemy in the game. His name is Crunch. This is him over here in the red light. He's a character from Paragon, but I've repurposed him to be this creepy robot enemy that chases after you as soon as you discover him in the basement. Um, what I really liked about working with Crunch was just going nuts and making his sounds super over the top and loud and aggressive. Um, I'll play a few of them for you right now. So here's some of his footsteps. There's this big lumbering kind of enemy. Um, there's some hit sounds that play whenever you uh, actually shoot and it connects with crunch. Just some metallic ricochet type noises. And these are my favorite, his vocals. So he has an awake noise. A death sound. And a vocal for when you actually kill him as well. It's almost as if he's powering down in a way. Um, but those are all called from blueprints and from animation events uh, to put together that whole scene of him chasing you. So now that we're in Crunch's blueprint, uh, I can show you where I've hooked up everything. So on this on C pawn event, uh, there's a bunch of logic for making sure that Crunch starts running towards the player. But on the first sighting of the player, it plays this awake sound. Um, and so it'll scream at the player and They'll hear that and that way they'll know that crunch has been activated and running towards them um, for the death sound it's actually split into two areas there's a bunch of logic up here for deactivating a bunch of stuff that you don't need to worry about 
but there's also the post event node here that plays the death vocal. And then from there, the animation plays for the uh, death animation. So let me browse to that really fast. And so in the death animation, I have this AK event notify that you can probably hear is playing very quietly, um, but that will play the death land event, which calls that sound of crunch slamming into the ground. So that paired with the actual vocal itself called from blueprints puts together that whole scene of crunch being killed, flying backwards and landing onto the ground. Um, another detail that I really enjoyed with crunch was actually creating his attenuation. So on crunch himself, I have in the positioning tab here, a custom attenuation that I wanted to really be specific for crunch. Uh, so I made his own attenuation for him. Uh, that actually never makes him quite silent. Uh, it goes pretty far down, so you can tell when he's far away, but it is never actually silent, just so that you always know that Crunch is coming after you. He doesn't make any sound when you're not near him or he hasn't seen you, but once he sees you, he will nonstop be in your ears until he is dead. And I really wanted to convey that uh, stress and that tension from him chasing you by doing that. And I think it, it worked out pretty well. Uh, I tried messing with some low pass filtering, some other stuff as well. So when he's really far away, it's not super in your face and you can focus on other things, but he's still that low rumble that's uh, constantly there coming towards you. Uh, so yeah, I had, a, I had a ton of fun just creating that attenuation and, and having him be a very threatening presence. But on the topic of attenuations, there's a bunch of props within the game as well, such as the front door, the fire that's within the actual building. Um, there's some blue glowy bits that are in the basement as well, a flickering light. Um, all of those are attenuated so that when you're walking around, um, they actually are, uh, they actually feel as if they are in the space themselves. So if I play through the game really quick and I run inside, I'll be able to showcase that the best with the fire that is indoors. Here's the fire, you can hear it's crackling. I'm near, uh, near it, uh, and as I walk away, it's it quieter. And if I get a little close and I turn my head, it comes out of the left, turn my head again, comes out of the right. And if I get close enough, it comes back to mono. So that way it's not weirdly panning left, back and right uh, if you're too close to it. And so I did that attenuation like this. I'll pull it up really fast. And so I created an attenuation that does actually go completely silent whenever you're far away, but I also edited the spread of the sound so that when you're far enough away, it will actually switch to being um, a 3D sound and, and pan left and right. But when you're too close to it, it will stop panning at left and right and will have it sort of envelop uh, both of your ears and make it feel as if it's right next to you, uh, because it is. And if it was panning left and right while you're next to it, it'd break that suspension of disbelief a little bit. Uh, so I was actually really happy with how that worked out as well. And so I created my own attenuation for that and applied it to all of the props using this actor mixer uh, that all of them are underneath. Every looping sound, every one shot, all of that stuff within the scene. And the last bit that I want to go into are the footsteps and the ambiences uh, from the game. So I will just walk around the scene really fast. You can listen to the footsteps and the ambiences right now. Uh, you can hear the snowy footsteps and kind of a howling wind sort of ambience going on. If I run into the house, uh, you'll be able to hear there's wooden footsteps now. And as soon as I enter, there are there's less wind. And now there's still the wooden footsteps, and there's even carpeted footsteps. And if I run into the basement, there's a new reverb, there's a new ambience, and now there's these concrete footsteps as well. Also more carpet. Uh, so I had, a, I had a ton of fun actually putting together uh, the three separate areas, what I wanted them to feel like and sound like. So I wanted the outside to be very aggressive, so it makes you want to go inside. And the inside of the cabin is very calm, very uh, quiet, very intimate. And then the basement to be a little bit unnerving uh, with a little bit of some howling wind in there and the longer reverb tails in there as well. Um, so I'll show you in wise how I've actually put those together. So most of the footsteps are within this switch container here, or actually all of them. 
uh, and they're all set into these random containers that contain uh, footsteps of different types. So there's carpet footsteps, concrete footsteps, snow footsteps, and wooden footsteps. And I've recorded all of those myself just to make sure that they actually fit the scene uh, the way that I want it to. And I've created different materials that they are all assigned to. And so when you're in the game, every time you take a step, uh, there is a line cast that is sent downwards to see what is beneath the player, and it checks what tag that uh, actor has. And if that tag corresponds to a actual switch within the switch container, it switches to that correct uh, to that correct um, switch, and then plays the correct footstep. So. It was a little bit of a complicated process to get that set up, but now it's super simple to add any new ones. Since I just add a switch, type in the tag on the new material, add a new random container, and I'm off to the races. So I was really happy with how well that turned out itself. Um, with the ambiences, there's another switch container for the areas, which is um, also used for the reverbs, but I'll go into that in a second. Uh, so there's a switch container for what area you are in the game, and I can show you in Unreal how I set that. Um, the best place I could probably show that would be for inside of the cabin itself. So at the door here, there's this small box right here towards the door. Not this bigger one, but the smaller one right up against it. That is what I'm using to switch from the outdoors to the indoors area. Uh, so when the player passes through that, the uh, wise is told to switch the area switch container or the area switch game sync to be the indoors switch. Uh, and there's another box actually on the outside that will tell the uh, why or that will tell wise to switch from the indoors to the outdoors or from anything to the outdoors. So I have those two boxes set up pretty much at any inter uh, any threshold that I want so that I can change from one area to the next. So I have another one of those in the stairwell. Get to it. Uh, you can kind of see it clipping into the, the logs a bit there. Um, there's one to set it into the basement, which is this one closer to the actual basement itself. And then there's one on the side closer to the camera here that is setting it back to the indoors. So that way, if I, no matter which way I pass through it, it's setting it to the correct one. Uh, so now that I had that in place, I could actually go into Wise and say, whichever area I'm in, play the correct ambience. So I have a basement ambience an indoor ambience, and an outdoor ambience. But not only with that, I also have on the footsteps, I have um, a bunch of states, uh, or a bunch of uh, sends that are dictated by that state group. Sorry, I was calling it a switch group, it's a state group uh, for what area the player is in. So within that, I have all of these auxiliary sends, so I can dictate how much of the audio I want to send to each reverb uh, that I have up here. So I have a basement reverb, an indoors reverb, and an outdoor reverb, all with their own settings, so that the player uh, will definitely feel like they're within the space that they're in. Um, and I wanted that to really come across uh, well, since I had those three separate areas in mind and I wanted different moods for each one. So all of the materials go to those different areas. I believe Crunch's footsteps also go to those uh, different areas as well. Um, and so I have all of this audio within the footstep switch container going to those reverbs. Uh, and I can demonstrate that right now. So again, I'll run inside really fast. Uh, the outdoor reverb is very slight, but there's a little bit of an echo. As I walk inside, you can hear there's a, a little bit of a reverb in there. And actually, this also dynamically changes the reverb tails of the weapons, like I said before. So I will fire the hand cannon in here. And I fire it outside. And if I run into the basement really fast, a bit longer of a reverb on these footsteps and also a different gun tail so 
So it was kind of fun to have all of that come together. It was a bunch of small little pieces that I was able to put together into one overall experience that really helped ground all of those bigger wow moment type of sounds. Uh, so without these little intricacies, everything else would have felt out of place. So once those were all in, everything really felt like it was glued together a bit better and that was really satisfying. So thank you so much for watching the video. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to comment down below or send me an email at ericalmoen at gmail.com. Send me a DM on Twitter at ericalmoen. And if you even are soon enough, uh, there's some videos up on my Twitch channel, which is just twitch.tv slash ericmoen. Uh, and you can check out some development streams that I did of this as well, where I went through some level designing, some wise and unreal stuff, uh, pretty much all aspects of putting this together. I, I streamed bits of on Twitch, so feel free to check those out as well. Uh, but yeah, thanks so much. Bye.